Not only are commodities and their limits persuasive, but so is information. There was a graduate student here at ASU who was in the marketing department, and uh, he was getting his PhD in marketing. He was a returning student who had owned a business for a number of years, quite a number of years, and, and his business distributed meats in, in institutional quantities, train car loads, to hotels and restaurant chains and so forth, and he imported meat from around the world. Well, he was struggling to figure out what to do with his dissertation, what study he could run. And as he was pondering that, uh, he got a call from a really close friend of his in the uh, Australian National Weather Service. And this guy uh, was high up in that organization, and he said, Hey, um, you know, our weather models have just confirmed there's going to be a drought upcoming in Australia. And, I thought you might want to know is it's going to obviously affect the price of Australian meats that you buy here. In this case, it was Australian beef. And so as soon as he got that call, by the way, his friend said, you know, um, we've got to do some due diligence on uh, the work that we've done before we release it to the press. So it's going to be a little while before that information gets out to the press. Just thought you might want to know about this. So as soon as he got that information, he said, I know what my dissertation is going to be. So he had his salespeople divide his customers up into three groups. Uh, the standard approach. In that approach, his salespeople called up customers and said, we have so many train car loads of Australian beef available at current prices. Are you interested in buying any? And if so, how many do you want to buy? And in that condition, 10 train car loads of Australian beef sold. The scarcity approach. The salespeople called up and said, hey, um, due to certain weather conditions in Australia, there's going to be a drought upcoming there that's negatively going to impact the price of Australian beef upward. We have so many train car loads of Australian beef available at such and such a price. Are you interested in buying any? And if so, how many do you want to buy. And in that condition, 24 train car loads of beef sold, and 2.4 more, times more Australian beef sold. Third condition, we have exclusive sources in the Australian National Weather Service who've just told us that there's a, they've confirmed a drought upcoming in Australia. And this information is not yet released. Uh, to the press. It's going to negatively impact the price of Australian beef upward. We have so many train car loads of Australian beef available at current prices. Are you interested in buying any? And if so, how many would you like to buy? And in that condition, 61 train car loads of Australian beef sold. Six times, over six times the number. So here's the key. You know, information, exclusive information isn't like wine. It doesn't get better with time. It's like a bagel, isn't it, Bobette? <laughs> it's like a bagel. And you've got to go with the rule of the bagel. Bagel, you've got to eat it when it's fresh and hot. So when you have a piece of information, new or exclusive information that you can legally, morally, ethically share, with others, with those you're trying to influence, when should you share it? As soon as you get it. Now, here's what I would do to tie the principles of reciprocity and scarcity together. Information is also a gift, is it not? So I would have a list of people. You know, if I regularly get information before others get it, uh, before my customers get it, and I almost certainly do, right, if, if you're somebody who's... Uh, the expert in your field or who is being looked to by your customers for information or advice, you must get lots of information before they ever know about it. So when you get information that you can legally, ethically, morally share with your clients and customers, I'd have a list of people who I wanted to initiate a relationship with, that I wanted to uh, build a stronger relationship with, that I needed to repair a relationship with. And when I called them with that information, not only would I tell them of that 
recency of the information and its exclusivity, but I would tell them of their priority. I wanted to call you first. I wanted you to be the first. I wanted you to know before the end of the day. I wanted you to know before the end of the week. Not only talk about and point to the exclusivity of it, but also tell them of their priority in receiving it. 